Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Get It Done podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Ryan. And today we have David Castillo. He is a realtor with EXP Real Estate. Uh, David is uh, won the EXP Wisconsin Rookie of the Year. Having started June 1st, he closed 13 transaction, uh, transactions and he won uh, the award of Rookie of the Year. David, welcome to the Get It Done podcast. Hey, what's going on, Jimmy? Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. For sure, brother. So we're going to dig into your story a little bit. And uh, now, given that you just started, it's um, you're kind of, we, we call the Get It Done podcast, you know, the come up story. And you're kind of still on it. I mean, I mean, here, do you, would you, would you, you know, state the claim in the ground that you've made it as a, as a realtor being rookie of the year? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I would say I'm absolutely not where I want to be. This is just the beginning. I feel like I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm just stepping on the floor mat right now. I'm not even getting on the stairs yet. Um, so it's a fast start. It's a great start. But we all know it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Um, so just getting going right now, I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near close to being done. That's cool. And um, it's a really good thing that uh, I think that the reason why I really like, like you and I really wanted to interview is because, you know, you're still, you're hungry, you haven't made it yet. And that uh, that's one of those things that uh, is abundant in really any top performer that I've ever interviewed. So it's cool to see it in, uh, in somebody winning a rookie of the year. So, uh, but we will start out, we will uh, uh, do your come up story, how you got to this particular moment in your life. And uh, we generally set it up with uh, the story of Elon Musk being the richest man in the world. Uh, he's yeah. a story of making, you know, a million dollars to making a billion dollars and then becoming the richest man. But uh, the, the, the story from zero to a million is really the story that we're looking for. And uh, for you, David, uh, generally like to start with uh, where, are you, where are you born? So let's start there. Where, where, were, where was David born? Cool. Um, yeah, I'm from Greenfield, Wisconsin. Born and raised, um, you know, I I grew up playing soccer my whole life. I always had a, a ball at my feet. Um, so that was always, you know, prevalent, ingrained in me, like the sports, all that culture. Um, I grew up pretty active. I was always, I was always running around, playing around. I love being outside. I, I also did love my video games, but what kid didn't? Um, so, yeah, I ended up playing soccer my whole life, played club soccer, um, played all the way up until college. Um, just fortunately didn't really work out for me in college. And that was my first real taste, I would say, of adversity because I genuinely wanted to play soccer at bigger, higher levels. Uh, and I feel like I feel like I kind of folded. Um, not going to lie, I kind of just I just gave it up without really any any fight well, uh, let's, uh, let's uh let's break break that down uh let's uh yeah. let, let's slow it down to just a little bit so growing up in greenfield um and cool. in, in, in playing soccer were you an only child what uh did you have a big family uh what are your parents doing yeah so i have two younger sisters so i was for the most part my first part of my life i, I like to call it right I was an only child. Um, my sister's my first one's 17, my other one's 14. Um, so I'm 24. So for, for a good portion there, I was I was an only child. I got all the attention. Um, yeah, my dad, he uh, he works in concrete. He's a cement mason. Um, and then my mom is is an accounts payable. So she does a lot of numbers and financials and stuff like that. So I mean, it sounds pretty normal. Yeah, pretty normal. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, was growing up like uh, pretty much the normal, just norm, normal childhood growing up in Greenfield? Yeah, normal, um, you know, normal neighborhood, played with the kids, played, you know, baseball, football, rode my bikes around the neighborhood, like, you know, pretty, pretty normal. All right. What video games did you play? You, you mentioned video games. So I'm just gonna... All right. So I was a big Pokemon fan. I would have I would have the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy SP, the Nintendo DS, and I, I kid you not, I was I was attached to that thing, man. Um, 
I would, I would go through my phases, right? Um, you know, it was like, oh, you got to go to soccer practice. All right, cool. Well, I'm playing it in the car, <laughs> right? I, had, I, was, I was a kid that would play it under the sheets and act like I'm sleeping, you know? You know, it was bedtime, but I had to sneak a little, a little playing time in. So you were a Pokemon addict is what, is, is, is what yeah, you were. It was definitely one of my favorite games. Then I kind of grew up and I started playing kind of the sports games and a little, okay. a little of those racing games too, but. Okay. Sounds good. What, uh, where'd you go to uh, grade school? Grade school. I went to somewhere called Edgewood elementary. Um, okay. so that's in Greenfield, literally right down the block for me. Sounds good. So born in Greenfield, go to school in Greenfield. How about high school? Same, same, same thing. Went to high school. In yep. Greenfield. Yep. Greenfield high school. Um, okay. Well just describe this time in your life. Was this a, uh, uh, more of a, you said that college was kind of the time when it was really, you got the big part of adversity. What was, what was high school? Like, was it always just like easiest pie? Like basically you're just like really good at soccer. You're crushing it at that. And, um, and that was pretty much it. Or what was, uh, what was that part of your life like? Um, you know, I was always, I was always active. Um, I was playing club soccer all throughout my high school years. So I didn't really have a chance to, to socialize too much because that was kind of my life. Um, and then, I mean, I was, I was not the biggest fan of school. Um, if I'm being honest, I never really enjoyed it. Never really saw the bigger picture to it. Um, and I always questioned it. So <laughs> That was kind of my high school experience. Granted, I, I did what needed to be done, right? Obviously, I, you know, I was, I was willing to graduate high school. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't not going to do that, right? But I always, I always questioned it. It was, it was something that I never really enjoyed. Some of the biggest names of people that I've interviewed basically almost did not graduate high school, like in a variety of different ways, or basically like shouldn't have, but they got their GED and like later or whatever. Um, I almost didn't graduate too. It came right. down to like the last day and I'd like write a paper and it was like a lot of, so anyway, a lot of people, it's funny that you just fought it. Why do you think that was for you that you just didn't see it as, you know, something where it's going to pay off in the end where you wanted to apply yourself? Yeah, I, I just never saw the value in a lot of the topics that were being, you know, forced onto me. Um, that's, that's what it felt like the whole, four years of high school and to top it off it was like you got to wake up you know super early to to go do something you don't want to do and you're forced upon it was just the whole structure of it I wasn't a fan of it so I think you know it, it's all encompassing it's all part of it like just the whole experience wasn't something that that I was a fan of so you hated school but but uh, basically soccer got you through it and you were able to you know I guess make it through this part of your life with that what uh do you have any story other than that I mean it looks like it looks like soccer was 100 percent what it was what was what was it like I mean being that you're being going to college for soccer I'd have to imagine you're pretty good um how did your team do uh was that I mean if it's everything I'm sure that you guys were fairly good what was your soccer career like yeah um so for me soccer was was my life up until like nine or ten and then I had like a two or three year break there I don't know really why I had it um it was it got to a point I think when I was younger playing soccer that it, it felt like it was forced upon me versus just natural and then I started to spark that energy for it again I think when I was like 12 12 or 13, somewhere around there. I don't recall exactly, but I just, I joined a club team and right away, you know, excelled, picked it up, no problem. Um, it, it was like, I never really lost a step. Um, and then I just, I kind of became obsessed with it. I wanted to play in college. Um, and I think as I was getting towards the end of my high school career, I kind of realized that I wasn't where I needed to be um to play at the high levels in college and so I was like well I'll just 
I'll go to Whitewater, which is close, um, and I can get a really good finance degree there, and it'll be all good and dandy. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I ended up going there. Um, for some reason or another, I just, I think I just let my own emotions eat me up and I didn't even, I didn't even end up playing my, my freshman year there. Um, I did end up trying my sophomore year and get this, Jimmy, I didn't even, I didn't even make the team, man. I, really? Team. Yeah. Yeah. And granted, I, you know, I, there was a couple, I was probably out of commission for like a year, you know? Well, Not, listening, to you, listening to you describe it, it doesn't seem like your head was in it at all. I think my head was in it um in the beginning when I first had that idea as I started to deal with the adversity of maybe realizing I wasn't good enough um then those doubts started to become my reality does that make sense like I started, I started to really believe those doubts and then then that's that's when it kind of like I didn't I mean I didn't know that I was doing this at the time but yeah the, that was that was kind of the story behind that um so along the way, I ended up picking up working out um, and that was picked up back in high school, actually, as a form of making me a lot more recruitable um, back in high school, you know, because a lot of soccer players, they don't, they don't really, they work out. They kind of just do the cardio and if anything, a couple soccer specific things um, as far as agility goes and all that stuff. But right. I was doing strength training and stuff like that. And I picked that up back in high school. So that kind of really helped me come, come to amends and agreement that I wasn't going to be playing at a higher level. Yeah, most so soccer players are not the like go to the weight room type, but uh, the type of that, that goes to the weight room, I mean, that's a little bit different work ethic, you know, type person that's, you know, working on themselves to better it. So, okay, so, you know, you, you were there, you just, you just needed to catch up um, and then you didn't make the team. Uh, and you're there for finance. So I guess what, what's it like going to college at, at Whitewater? Why Whitewater out of all the places? It kind of just seems like, eh, seems like a good place. I'll just wind up there. Is that kind of what it was or what made yeah. you choose Whitewater? Yeah, um, so I, I always, I mean, I liked finance. I thought it was something that was important. I always had a feeling growing up money was important, obviously, right? we all needed to survive. Um, and so that's why I chose finance. Now I chose Whitewater just because of the fact that I thought it was, it was pretty close. Um, I could save some money um, as far as it being close to home. You know, I didn't have to go a couple hours away across the country to go somewhere to go to school. Um, but I also thought the value was there as far as, I mean, it's one of the best, if not the best business school, I think in the state as far as I'm aware. Um, cool. It just, yeah, it just all made sense. I had an opportunity possibly to play there, I had, you know, communication with the coach and stuff. And so, yeah, it was just, it was just the combination of everything. So how does your uh, soccer career turn around? Uh, honestly, I, I, after that, I really just stopped playing. Um, I'll play. Here it. You didn't make the team and it was like, nope, I'm done. Yeah, you know, I think I think for me, Jimmy, um, I realized that there wasn't there wasn't a future as far as me me continuing to go down that road, man. Because with soccer, it's something that you have to just grow up playing. You have to just love it, and that's that's really what it was. It was just super hot and cold for me throughout my my career. So I started to pick up the working out thing, and I actually liked that a little bit more, um, making that a part of my routine versus playing soccer. So I think I ended up just transitioning into, okay, let me, let me make the working out the substitute to that. Okay. Right? So. Sure. So, uh, so that happened, that happens in, uh, in, in college is that, that transition. Uh, take us to after that. What, uh, anything traumatic or any crazy, crazy college story that you have uh, that you'd share with us on camera? Yeah, no, I mean, as, as far as anything crazy traumatic goes, not really. Um, I mean, I was just, 
I was just kind of in my own head from it, man. It's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you gotta, you kind of have to figure out yourself. You're young, you don't know who you are and you got to go through some things. Right. And I think that was, that was me going through some things. Um, I think me being at school, you know, and obviously I, I already had, I already had some, some beef with school. I didn't like school. So yeah. for me, to college was another step and, soccer is kind of bringing me along into that and then now that's not there so what am I really doing at school right yeah. um I was fighting I was fighting like how do I how do I still stay at school without even playing soccer anymore so right. what what did you do I mean did you did you end up graduating yeah yeah um it was a little bit of a struggle um I ended up staying another semester just because I was I wasn't fully invested in it. Um, I knew I knew that there was other things out there for me. I knew I wanted to be in business. I knew I wanted to, you know, be an investor, invest. You know, I I knew I wanted to challenge myself, but school wasn't wasn't challenging me. Um, I would sit in these classes, and you know, I would I would question a lot of things, man. I I, I wouldn't say it out loud, but I was it, there was thoughts running through my head. I'm like, well, what am I what am I sitting here for? Right, I could just go out there and do. Um, so it almost felt like a waste of time, if, if that makes sense. Because I was, I was, I was. There's so many questions going on every single day in my head. Um, but you know, fast forward, I graduated um, December 2019. I had to stay another semester because I was just. There's always that resistance there. Um, had to retake a class or two. Um, throughout the career. And I would always, I would always wait last minute to get signed up for my courses. So it's always tough for me to get my courses in there. Um, because that was always a struggle for me. I was like, oh, I, I don't even know if I want to go this semester, but okay, I guess. I'll right. Go. Right. So figuring out was the last thing that you were trying to do. Um, and then you ended up graduating like a half a year late, but that's all right. You at least did it. You at least finished. Yeah. Most people with that attitude don't make it through. I'm surprised the story ends with, hey, I graduated, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, I never went to college, so I'm, I get you on the value part. Like, I, I think you should just go out and do it. And I think that a lot of times people that go don't ever use their degree, and it really wasn't that big of a value, but it was just a big party or yeah, uh, or, or, or whatever, whatever it is. Um, okay, so uh, December 2019. Not very long ago, um, uh, not much longer after that, you were a realtor. What did you do in between times? In between, um, like you, so you, you're out of college. What now? Yeah, that was a very transitional phase. Not too long ago that I went through. Um, I was trying to figure it out, Jimmy. Um, I was do I was thinking like, do I use this degree? do I, or do I go, you know, the path less traveled, right? Like, what do I do? Um, and that was an internal battle I was dealing with a lot. Um, you know, I was applying to jobs and I, I didn't really care for school, you know? And so I didn't really have a resume to really show for it to begin with. So I was just looking at anything entry level that I could possibly leverage as far as a resume builder and you know you start thinking about it you're like man is my time really worth this like is my hour really worth this i i know i know too much um you know i think my value is a lot more than what this hour is paying me and so you kind of have to take that leap of faith um i I ended up getting connected with Jesse through uh, a friend that's also an agent. His name's Carson, Carson Mitchie. Um, he's also an agent with EXP and he kind of planted the seed about becoming an agent. Started talking about the business, how we get compensated, um, you know, what the benefits are to EXP, what the culture's like at EXP. And I didn't really think much of it. Um, I just entertained the conversation just because he's a friend and I was like, yeah, man, like, cool and then slowly we started to have more conversations about it then he connected me with jesse and you know i'll be honest in the beginning 
it just felt like another pitch. Uh, because I've been pitched other things, you know, in my life before. Um, I, it's not something I'm not new to, but it did feel like another pitch. Um, and, and then I started to really see the benefits of it um, through, through just the culture, just through seeing how charismatic, you know, Jesse was my mentor um, that I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to take these courses because if all else fails, I don't get a job, right? Then I can at least pursue real estate um, in the meantime, right? So that's what I ended up doing. Um, I got enrolled in my courses February of 2020, um, early February. I finished them up um, like late April, got licensed mid-May, and then was onboarded in that first week of June. So, I mean, that, that really is incredible, though, too, to have a, your first closing just a month later, but then it added up to 13 in just that short time. It's fairly incredible. What would you attribute your success uh, to? Um, you know, I think I, I would attribute it to really developing myself early on before even any of this was a thought. Um, like I said, I always questioned a lot of the, the normal schooling and I was, I was always wondering why, you know, you get connected to people on social media, the big names. I'm sure you heard of Grant Cardone. Um, another one that was really important to me was Andy Frisella. He, um, call him, they call him the MF CEO. Um, he, he was one that really kind of spoke to me in the beginning. Um, I would listen to his podcast. And then, you know, the next thing you know, it turns into reading books that you, you hated reading before and now you don't hate reading because you see the value that reading brings you, right? Because you start reading topics that you actually want to learn about that bring value to you. Um, so it turns from that, you know, getting exposed to a quote, right? You see a quote on social media, Instagram, then you start following this person, you start following their podcasts, then it exposes you to books and other people and other ideas. So I would say, you know, throughout my college career, I was always exposed to that. Um, I just kind of, took it to another level because it was in the beginning where it was theory right it's all like oh this is great this is this is just this is just a theory in my mind I love this but now how am I gonna execute how am I get, where's my action plan and I think I just like Tony Robbins says you got to get tired of your sickness right and I, I think I got tired of it I was like this is just too much thought like it's time to just execute right so I mean I would say just that, that whole, I mean, it was a period of three to four years where I was really into it. I just wasn't doing right. And I know your mentor, uh, Jesse Garcia, we were lucky enough to interview him uh, and his wife, uh, Lisa Marie, and uh, he just oozes, you know, a Tony Robbins type of, you know, mentality. And uh, uh, we call it an abundance mindset. And he's always just that type of really just lift people up and uh and encourage them it's really cool uh what uh how do you think jesse helps you how do you think i, I would say i should take jesse at his name out of it more so how does good coaching help somebody that is just starting out in real estate yeah um it's important you know i think a mentor will see a lot more in you than you see for yourself they'll they'll open your mind up you know and they'll really push you when you need to be pushed. They, you know, they'll hold you accountable. Um, but they'll also, you know, they'll nurture you if, if you need that, right? Like it's, it's the whole spectrum. Um, I think mentorship was super important for me because it was like, okay, great. You have one deal, but you said you were going to do this, David, like, <laughs> don't worry about what other people are doing. You, you told me you were going to do this. Right. So it was that whole, it was that whole, that whole thing. Accountability. Keeping accountable, you know, he's providing value. Um, all the shadowing that I was able to do. Um, just really learning from their mistakes. Right. And, and being able to leverage them just in general as a whole. Right. Because, you know, those mentors that you might have, I guarantee you, this isn't the first business they started. Right. I guarantee you they've probably been in business a long time. They know a lot more than than you think they know, than they've exposed you to. Right. 
So I would say that's, that's a big, that's a big thing to keep in mind when it comes to mentorship is just leveraging them in general, maybe not just for that business specific um, task, but there's a lot more to, to someone that's a mentor. There's a lot more that you can learn from them just in general, other than business, right? What are you working on right now? What's your biggest struggle? Because you haven't been in the business a whole heck of a lot, long, long time. So I have to believe that there's, you know, there's someone that's, you know, in, in the industry, as long as you is going to be working on a lot of things. I'm just curious as, as far as where you're at, you're 13, you know, in or, or whatever it is at this point. Um, you know, what are you working on right now? What's your biggest struggle? Yeah, um, I would say for me, it's scaling up. Um, you know, because I can get two or three deals here and there, but now how do I make that into 10 consistently a month? Right. Or, you know, how do, how do you, how do you scale that up um, versus just using your own efforts? Right. And, and how do you leverage other people? How do you leverage other systems, platforms? How do you create these, these systems in place? Right. To where it's, it's really not that it's on automation, but very close to, um, so for me, it's just learning the whole business side of things, um, and, and being willing to part with my money to, to leverage other people's time, right? Cause it's, it's, a, it's a different animal when, yeah, you make so-and-so, but you know, you, you pay referral fees and then you have to pay a TC and then you have to pay taxes. And, and so I'm just kind of getting used to it right to to like we're building a business right more than more than anything um and creating that that scale and that leverage to the business yeah any top producer that i talked to about this wishes that they would have focused on that sooner a lot of times people just try to perform as big as they can right away and then just make it as big as possible and then i don't know i've, I've made a ton of mistakes with this myself <laughs> it will continue i mean you're doing a building a team and you know actually scaling if there's no such thing as one size fits all and there's no such thing as you know um well whatever basically if something if something that works for me won't well, maybe will work for you and vice versa and uh or a different real estate agent team um for that for that instance as well uh in in speaking of that uh maybe that's a good segue so what is next for you uh where where do you see yourself uh going within exp and we're in, in really just real estate in general yeah, I mean, with, with EXP, I, I really want to get my transactions up more consistently. Um, you know, I, I set out to have a goal of four closings consistently every month. So, and then on top of that, not only, you know, having that consistently, but essentially kind of having that on automation as, as close as possible, right? So that then I can focus on building a team within EXP. Um, because that's another that's another revenue stream that we have that we can leverage um, that I know is is the big play with with this with this brokerage. So you know I, I not only want to continue to grow my production, leverage it, scale it, but then also grow the team, right? So that I can start to to leverage that um, income stream because you know that's that's residual passive income that you know. I like to say cash flow is king, not cash is king, right? So when you have residual monthly cash flow, I mean, that's king. Um, so I would say those two things, growing, growing that um, simultaneously with leveraging, scaling, and trying to automate, you know, the real estate business as much as possible. Um, and then, you know, later on, I'm sure there'll be an opportunity to give back. Um, and I think that's, that's one thing that, I've been wanting to get in touch with. Um, so I, you know, I just, I look forward to that being, you know, an opportunity to just give back to, to any of the causes that, you know, I'm passionate about. So all three of those things, man, looking forward to all of them. Brother, there's, you, got, you got a long way to go on. I mean, you just started out. There's a lot of cool things to, uh, to do a uh, long list of accomplishments to uh, things to strive for, for sure. Um, is there any uh, shout outs that you'd like to give to uh, anybody um, in your uh, it, 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 part of Jesse's team or anybody that's particularly uh, helped you in your, uh, your pursuit to being uh, to becoming rookie of the year? 
Yeah, um, you know, my parents have always been a really good support system for me. They've always supported me um, really in anything that I've done. They've never told me, no, don't do that. Like, that's scary. <laughs> right. They've always, they've always been like, you know what, I, you know what you're doing. Like, go do it. Right. They've always supported me. So I would say my parents, first and foremost, um, have always been very supportive of me. Um, you know, and then obviously I can't say enough about my my mentors everyone around me that whole group man it's it's all nothing but positive um you know abundance like it's it's all you know it's all all, all of that um there's never any sort of animosity there's never any negativity it's it's always accountability you know being positive abundance everything man like like i can't say enough yeah. Name names. Corey, Corey Talaska, Jesse Garcia, Lisa Marie, you know, Andrew Wiseman, you know, and the list goes on and on. Like, they've all been great. So I can't say enough about them. Very cool. Um, uh, and thanks for mentioning all, all of their names. Uh, d d beautiful. Um, is there anything that you would like to uh, uh, add to... Uh, to real estate or, uh, or, or your direction or EXP or where you're going. Yeah. You know, I, I like what you're doing here, Jimmy. This is super cool. Um, you're, you're creating your personal brand and like, and I think that's something I would ultimately like to create later on, um, down the line where I can create my own personal brand. Um, and you know, you, who knows where that can take you. Right. Like I well, would, they just I gotta do it. Uh, I tell everybody, you just gotta do it. I, I talked about it for a long time before I did it, and, I, and it just yeah. did it. And it's now I, it's like my most favorite thing in the world. I love doing it. <laughs> it's so much fun because we get to know each other on a deeper level. And truthfully, like, when do we ever have a talk like this? I could know you for ten more years and not ever get this story out of you. And it's really cool because uh, we we use this. You know, this is a great story. If somebody you know listens to the, this whole thing, they uh, they they have thought that this has been nothing short of amazing. I mean, of course. And, uh, and, and because of that, they're going to, you know, you know, open up their iPhone and, you know, tap the five-star review because that's just what you do when you do that. It only takes, <laughs> you know, like 30 seconds. You can just tap uh -huh. the five stars. But anyway, um, thanks brother. I really appreciate that. And I would just encourage, just go out and go out and do it. Um, to anybody out there that's doing it. And of course, if anybody wanted to reach out, for help with that i love uh collaborating with people about that anybody that does podcasts generally does yeah. uh all right well i want to be super respectful of your time david so uh there's a couple questions that i ask everybody um so we're going to uh, start with uh, do you feel like you ever had a big break man honestly until now no i mean i've never really been recognized for much in my academic career um much less in a professional setting um, so it's really cool to kind of see something come to light and be recognized for those efforts. I would say, if anything, it's been recently that, that I've, I have felt that. But even then, it, I in no way, shape or form feel satisfied. Right. So it, it's cool to see some recognition. Though. Don't get me wrong. Cool. So here, being rookie of the year, this is your big, this is the big break. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's it's cool, man. Like I've had other things like as far as fitness goes, man, you, you reach PRs, you know, you hit new maxes as far as lifts go, but this is, this is a different, this is a different animal because it's been in another area of my life, right? Like I've never really applied myself as far as academics go, as far as anything professional goes until recently. So it's great to see something come to fruition for sure. All right, beautiful. Was there ever a time, David, you thought about giving up? Um, I mean, I, I gave up in the past already, man. Like I gave up trying to play soccer. So yeah, you know, I have felt that, um, when it comes to business, I don't think I'll ever feel that. Right. Um, I mean, I think I'll always be in business. I don't think I'll ever give up being in business. Um, for me, I always, I mean, it might be drastic, but I always take the mentality of either do this or I die. It's like, you know, there's really no, no other way around it. I could, I could go through whatever adversity, but I'm still going to do it. So. Do this or die. 
yeah, man, like it's do it or die, you know, like whatever adversity is going to come your way, take it on, you know, because th there's, you're not going to have a smooth road. That's, that's a fact. Right. So, so just roll with the punches. Growth is messy is what, 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 what we like to say. Um, uh, for sure. It's not going to be smooth. You got to roll with the punches. I love it. Uh, if you were to do it all over again, David, what would you change? Nothing, man. I'm here for a reason. Um, I'm excited to be here. This is my story. Um, regret, regret doesn't exist, man. I'm, I'm here for a reason. <laughs> love it, man. No, I mean, it's just fine. That's a great answer. I, I love it. Regret doesn't exist. That's something that a lot of times people experience much later in life. And, uh, and if you're living it now, I mean, that's why your numbers are where you're at. You're not living in regret. You're just doing it. You know, yeah. you're, you, and, and you mean you are building your brand. So, I mean, it's, it is cool to see on uh, starting out with a nice little, you know, notch on it with a rookie of the year. There's lots more, you know, little notches that you got to get, but, um, but it's, it's not a bad place to start. So that's pretty cool. So, uh, the final question just to set it up, you know, there is, um, a young David Castillo out there that, you know, maybe doesn't like school, hates school, matter of fact, you know, maybe they're doing soccer, maybe whatever it is. Um, or maybe they're just lost and not sure where they, what they want to do with where they want to go. Um, maybe they're debating real estate uh, or, you know, debating with joining a team or just getting started. What advice would you give to someone looking to get it done? And that's a great question, Jimmy. Um, I would say if you're looking to get it done, first and foremost, I remember when I was young, I would care way too much about what other people think um, and start doing things unapologetically, not recklessly, but, you know, start caring less about what other people think. Start learning a little bit more about who you are yourself, right? Because then you have a lot clearer direction of why you're doing certain things. And I spent too much time when I was younger doing things for other people that I didn't even know right? I've become a lot more clear in my focus, what I want to do, why I want to do certain things, you know, kind of what's, what's motivating me, what my purpose is. So I would say, man, like, find out, find out where your focus is at and, and why you're doing certain things, man, because I know for me, it was, I just cared too much about what other people thought way in the beginning. Um, so first and foremost, that man, and then, you know, secondly, Man, just, just do everything, do everything. I'm not like with passion, like, like, like your life depends on it. Like, you know what I mean? If your name's attached to it, don't, don't ever settle. Um, always put full effort into every single thing that you do, because that translates into every single aspect um, of your life. So those two things, man, anybody looking to get it done right there, boom. Love it, man. It's a fire answer. Um, all right. I want to uh, thank you, David, for, uh, for, for, for coming on. And I, I want to thank everybody uh, also for, for listening to David's story. Uh, David, if uh, anyone would want to you know, connect with you, uh, whether it be for real estate or for something else, uh, how, uh, how would you like them to connect? Yeah, uh, you guys can follow me on my Instagram. Uh, my handle is buildwithdavid. Um, you can connect with me on Facebook and LinkedIn, and then you can also connect with me on TikTok. It's also Build with David on TikTok. So all four of those things, let's connect. And KJ will, of course, put a uh, put some links in the uh, description uh, in the uh, in the podcast. So uh, all right, that's that's great. Uh, this has been a great show, David. Uh, again, thanks for for listening. And uh, this has been the Get It Done podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And if you want to support the show, uh, you can tell a friend, you can hit that subscribe button, but you, I tell you what, you know, that's really, really easy to do. You can just, you know, hit that five-star review button. Uh, if you learn anything about David, you liked, liked what you heard, you know, you just like an honest review, five-star would be preferred. Uh, but if you could do that, that'd be awesome. Makes a huge difference in uh, helping us reach more people. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Jimmy Ryan. Many more stories on the way.